just got done welding our two corner pieces on. I had to go ahead and cut the other corner off because the other corner was messed up too. So I went ahead and replaced it. Now there's an important uh, procedure that I need to show you. Let me get my welder put away here real quick. This big old mask off of my head. show you here is what I got here is I got a flat piece of copper strapping okay now what I use that for is when you're trying to weld new metal to old metal sometimes it doesn't uh, adhere too good and it wants to start breaking up and melting okay and what you want to do is get yourself an old piece of copper okay this is just a flat if you look at it okay flat piece and what I do is on this piece right here, we'll say. I went ahead and took my copper strapping, and I got me two packs of vice grips, okay, right there. And I went ahead and put it behind the piece that I'm welding, right up in the corner, see? So I fit it right up in there. And then what I did is I clamped that on there. Now what the copper does, it dissipates the heat, okay? And it also makes where you can weld that up and it won't fall apart on you and the weld won't drip out. Okay? So what you're looking at basically you're looking at something like this. Alright, can you see that there? Alright, let me get there it is. Okay, and what that does, that holds the two pieces together and helps it uh, weld itself together even better than if you didn't have it. So then when you take that off, okay, instead of having slag and you know, weld through and a bunch of pinholes. You got yourself a nice strong weld there that all you gotta do is barely grind it down and it's done. Now if you look at that corner right there, you can see, let me get these fucking glasses off. Them things are about 27 years old, but I still keep using them. If you look right there, you can see that that corner has been replaced, okay? I'm looking at it in there with you. There it is. I went ahead and replaced this corner as well, all right? Because it was messed up just as bad. And uh, what you want to do is hold your piece up to the light, and if you see a little pinhole in it, you need to go ahead and spot weld that to make sure that you got all, there's no holes in the piece that you're welding together. So this piece here is ready to uh, install on the car. All right, uh, what I got to do, I'm going to go across here, I'm going to see if there's any little pinholes. If there is, I'll spot weld those in, I'll clean this edge up, and this is ready to uh, spot weld into the hood. If you look over here, I went ahead and uh, put some white sealer on that. That's all I got. And I will paint that up in there before I put it together. I will go ahead and put some paint in there and bring it out here. To make sure that's all you know painted up there. And I'll also do the same to this. I'll go ahead and paint that. So if we take our piece like so. Let's see if I can get it started in there. Okay. Right. You're gonna see that that fits right up in there. That's gonna be a very, very nice fit. Nice tight fit. What I gotta do is I gotta go ahead and straighten all these edges just like I did on the roof, on the piece here. And then I'll clamp it all the way around and it'll be ready to weld in. And this job will be almost done. I didn't say it was done, I said almost done, okay? But, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's, pretty much of an extreme type of situation. You will probably, or don't know anybody that will ever run into something like this. But that's something that uh, you just learned there using your copper band. Let me get that. If you have, uh, you know, a larger than normal gap that you gotta weld in, always take your copper, put it behind it. Okay, I wouldn't use it with your hand because th this does get hot just like, you know, and uh, what that'll do, that'll help you fill it in better, fill the hole in that you're welding, or the seam, or whatever, without, you know, melting it all apart and just falling to pieces and starting over. That's another tip from uh, Southwest Rod and Custom. My friend, your friend, everybody's friend, Pete, on the ball, all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right here, Dallas, Texas, coming straight to you. 
worldwide with my little pal Bruno, always on the go. Let me get this done. I gotta get some pictures to send to the owner. Uh, he's excited to see. Okay, uh, we just got done installing our uh, latch panel inside the back side of the hood on our 1955 Buick. Now, I'm just going to show you what they got here. There's a few different uh, situations going on at one time. Now, I got the vice grips, which is basically holding it on each end. And then what I did, I took my hammer and my dolly, and I went ahead and I got that uh, seam very, very tight, and I got it all straightened out. And if you look, it curves perfect around that edge. Uh, I see a little spot right here. Okay. Go ahead. Now, what's really important on this type of situation is that you really have to try to go back to the factory way that you took it off. And one of the factory ways that we took it off, if you look right here, you'll see that there's a, there's a small hole where the corner of this panel is. Now what that is, that's a drain hole, okay? And I went ahead and I made it exactly just like the other piece when I welded this piece on. So I would have that little drain hole on there. So when the hood is actually the other way around and it's sitting on the car, that's the front of course, we're looking at from the back. And we got the curve. When water goes up in the hood, it'll have those small little drain holes, okay? So when you're doing a job like this, what I'm trying to say is you really, really have to pay attention to what's going on. That's ready to weld on. Now, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spot weld it just like factory, but I'm gonna use my welder to do it with. And if you look at these special pliers here, what that is, I told you about the copper. Well, this is actually a copper uh, head. And it's got a little uh, U-shaped uh, round clamp. And what you do is you go ahead and clamp that down, just like that. And what that does, that holds that together and it gives you a place to weld. Okay, let's get that in the middle. It also gives you a place to weld in there, and it's got the copper on the back so it won't melt through, okay? And it's very important on a job like this to always use spot weld pliers, okay? I have uh, four of those, so what I'll do is I'll get four of those welded, and then I'll you know, mix and match them and keep going around until they're all done. So our panel is welded. I went ahead and painted the back side of this panel with some black paint. And I also painted up inside there all the way around with black paint. And uh, it's done. I mean, all I gotta do now is weld that on there. I'll clean all this up where you won't be able to know that we welded it on. And uh, grind our spot welds down. And I think uh, Mr. Concourse Restoration is gonna be one happy camper. That was a two day job, full two day job on this. Just to put that panel on. Uh, and it took us a half a day to go over to uh, the parts car and get the other one off. It's hot out here, it's hot. Uh, it was very hot outside when we did that, when we took that panel off. If you look over here, here's our old panel, laying on the ground ready to go in the scrap iron. There it is. And new panel installed. I hope that uh, this has helped everybody out out there. I hope that uh, you learned something from it. I know it's not uh, something that you're going to actually do, but if you ever run into this problem on a car, this applies to all cars, this doesn't just apply to a 1955 Buick. I showed you how to make your uh, cuts, I showed you how to make your little uh, uh, patch panels, I showed you how to use the copper strap and the copper spot weld pliers. What else can I fucking show you besides telling you how to fucking do it and get it done fucking right? You want to take it over to the fucking Mr. Me Mr. Master uh, Mechanic? Do it. Take it over to the ASC certified fucking cocksucker out there and let him fucking do it. Okay? And guess what? It's going to cost you five thousand fucking dollars deposit, and he ain't going to do nothing with your car, but use it as a fucking storage unit out in the back. So there you go. Get it done. Got it done. It is fucking done. Okay? And if you can't get the motherfucker done, at least you know the knowledge of what's going on. When you take your car to the body shop, you can fucking be one step ahead of the guy that's trying to stick it in your fucking ass and rip you off. Okay? There's another fucking lesson for you. 
Take what you hold on. We got part time here to go tell us something. Okay, whoever the hell that is, thank you. Sorry for cussing in front of the little child that we have behind us, but I'm sure he's heard worse. Thank you very much. This is Pete. We'll see you later. Take it easy and goodbye. Trevor, how is our. You've been sanding that for three days, bud. Did you get the bottle spot sanded? That looks good. Let's go ahead and stop on that. You're done. I blow it. You're done. I don't Go ahead and sand the rest of it, the inside of it, and then all on the you back said, side. You said you'll do it inside of this. You okay, said but you still got to get the back side done, okay? Let's get it done, bud. There you go. He's learning. He's learning what the real world's like. He's learning that it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. We he, need for welding. And he's learning that welding doesn't hurt you. Take it easy, Trevor. We'll see you later. Bye. Is there... <laughs> You know, let me ask you a question, but is there anything else you got to add to the situation at hand? Anything? What? I don't know. You tell me. Exactly. Goodbye, sir. Let's get the horns done so we can at least get those painted today, buddy. And then we might go home. Might.